It's a sound Victorians are becoming used to. With population increases at record highs, business for this construction company has been booming over the last year. We've completed over 3,000 homes here in Victoria, over 5,000 nationally, 23% up in Victoria and uh, yes, it's been very strong. For the first time in nine years, Victoria has topped the table as the best economic performer of all the states and territories. The long-time runner-up owing its success to a major boost in construction activity, 28.6% above its decade average, with demand for homes and apartments. I've seen a lift in apartment building approvals to record highs in Victoria and it's reflected by the fact we've now got about 150 cranes over Melbourne at present. The state government says that's a sign that its investment in roads, transport and infrastructure is paying off. I think it really reinforces what we've suspected for quite some time, that Victoria is the economic powerhouse of the nation. Taking into account eight key indicators, Victoria leads overall economic performance due to growth in home construction. New South Wales has been demoted to second place but still leads in retail spending. The ACT retains third, leading the ranks in housing finance, while at the other end of the scale both the Northern Territory and WA had annual growth rates below the nation's average in seven of eight indicators. Powering the construction industry is a population increase that's outstripping all other states. Last year, Victoria added an extra 400 people a day, 60% coming from overseas. Migrants say its house prices and lifestyle attracting them to Melbourne. I feel like it has history of it, the town. And uh, Sydney is very expensive to live. It's multicultural, but also because the architecture feels quite European to me. So it's home away from home. And with Melbourne on track to surpass 5 million residents this year, there'll be no tools down just yet. Abby Dinham, SBS World News.